Our primary problem is wind slabs. Got one really good one here. Buried surface hard. Fist. We're coming over here to do an, a quick ECT. And you can see right now is we're only putting one person out on the slope, so we're using our good travel procedures. So we're skiing one at a time, and we even do that when we're digging pits. We usually can get these done in about five minutes. And with persistent weak layers and deep persistence, one of our best tests to find instabilities long after storms. Hey, it's Logan King with the West Central Montana Avalanche Center. What I'm gonna do here today is I'm gonna show you how to do an extended column test. Um, you'll also hear it referred to as an ECT. So the way we're gonna get set up for our extended column test is we're gonna dig a pit that's about a meter wide and we're gonna want a nice clean vertical face on the front end of it. And the setup for doing our test is once we have our pit ready is we're gonna measure back about 30 centimeters and then we're gonna go 30 centimeters back and 90 centimeters across. And so then we'll go another 30 back here. So we have a column that we're gonna make that's 90 centimeters across by 30 centimeters deep. So that's the dimensions. Um, all we need to do this test are gonna be two probes, a shovel, and some cord. Um, if you have a snow saw, it's really helpful too. So what we'll do is we'll just take out a piece of cord now that we have our probes marking our corner. And for this all you need is a little piece of parachute cord with some knots tied in it is all that I use. And we'll use this to cut our block to do our test. So you run it around your probes here. And a good little trick is if you actually instead of cutting a perfect rectangle is if you cut kind of a trapezoid shape. It'll help you get a better column when it's all ready. And so just by sawing this back and forth, you can cut your column. And what you're looking to do when you're cutting it is you want to get at least past your layer of concern on all four sides. Um, so you're usually going to end up cutting it about a meter to a meter and a half deep. Um, like I was saying before, I kind of like to do the trapezoid shape because then I can come back here and then I can see that my block is totally isolated there. So now that we have a nice isolated column, we're actually going to begin our test. The extended column test is going to be done very similarly to the compression test, where you're just going to rest your shovel on one side or the other, it doesn't matter which side. Um, you just want to put your shovel on one side of the block. You're going to tap it 10 times from the wrist, 10 times from the elbow, and then 10 times from the shoulder, and we'll get into the scoring as we start doing the test here. All right, so I'm gonna load one side of the block here. And I'm just gonna start with 10 taps from the wrist, looking for a failure in the snow. Okay, now I go 10 from the elbow. And so what that is, we would call an ECTN which means it did not propagate because it cracked right there. So just the top couple centimeters came off right there. What was the number on that? 11. 11. That would be an ECTN 13 at 173 centimeters, measuring from the bottom up. And so now I'm gonna go 10 from the shoulder and this is where I'm gonna start hitting it a fair bit harder. I'm gonna go walk around for five minutes to warm up just a little. Okay. That's an ECTN 16. 10, six. At 145 centimeters. And that's how you do the extended column test. The other result that you can get is what we would call a propagation. So if when I'd been hitting it, instead of failing just under the shovel, if it had actually continued across um, and broke all the way across the entire block, that's the propagation. That's what's really nice about this test is it shows you that propagation. The reason we're concerned with propagation 
is it shows us when we have the ability to have the slab avalanches, which are those bigger, more catastrophic avalanches that we're on the lookout for.